Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to today's event entitled Excel for Research, Power BI, and the Cloud. To learn more about the ways you can participate in today's event, please click on the Q&A button in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Today's session is being recorded on behalf of the Microsoft Corporation. If you do not consent to being part of a recorded session, please disconnect your line at this time. Attendees will be able to access the meeting recording via a link that will be delivered within 48 hours post-webcast. We encourage you to use the Q&A panel at any time to ask questions regarding the content or to request support. To do so, please click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen, type your question into the gray box, and click Send Question. Your question will appear under the pending messages until someone responds. If you experience any technical difficulties during today's webcast, please click on the Having Trouble Viewing link, the information page for troubleshooting tips. Or you can ask a question and I will help you resolve the issue. Thank you for your patience during these announcements. One moment, please, while I start the recording. Welcome to today's webcast, Excel for Research, Power BI, and the Cloud. Kenji, you now have the floor. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us um, for one of our Windows Azure for Research webinars. Um, we're really delighted to have Jeff Zhang here uh, to talk about uh, Excel uh, and particularly some of the new features uh, in Power BI, uh, which is really uh, the great tool for dealing with data uh, and visualizing uh, and understanding your data. So we're really, really happy that Jeff uh, is joining us to take you through that. Um, our Windows Agile for Research program is a global program where we're working with the research community uh, to help, help them understand, get on board, and really make use of cloud computing for their work. So we have a website, agileforresearch.com, um, and you can follow us on Twitter on uh, at Agile for Research. Uh, and also for the Power BI team, at Microsoft BI um, is the uh, Twitter account for that. Um, so with that, I'd like to hand over to Jeff. Um, who's going to talk a bit about uh, Excel and Power BI and then do some great live demos uh, and then uh, I shall uh, catch up with everyone at the end. So uh, thanks very much and over to you, Jeff. Okay, thank you, Kenji. Hello, everyone. This is Jeff Zhang. I'm a program manager from Microsoft Excel team. Today, I'm going to show you the power of Excel Power BI, walk you through a couple of scenarios of using Excel Power BI to process and visualize the research data and get quicker data insights in a more intuitive manner. Hopefully, after this 40 minutes demo, it can help you to see the potential of the Excel Power BI and probably help you to start making use of it in your daily research work. So um, I'm not a researcher, uh, I'm just an engineer, but um, here is a diagram that one researcher from Microsoft Research in Redmond here told me that doing research requires a lot of uh, intellectual horsepower to get insights from complex multi-source data all through different or combined perspectives. The more data you have, the better you can develop ideas or insights. However, in real world, um, there's a dilemma that the more volume or complex data you got, the more time it takes you to process it and make it even usable. So the majority of your time from what I heard is about 80% were consumed by working on the tedious data discovering, cleaning, or formatting job. You can tell me if that is the case in your daily work. What we really want is to use a tool that you are probably already familiar with to greatly shorten the time of data pre-processing and quickly generate meaningful and uh, interactive visuals, help you to gain quicker data insights upon the massive data you got. And what you really want is to save your time on shaping the data, unleash your brain power, and put it on the real research work. We think the Power BI tools um, that we produced from Microsoft can help you out. So um, BI, uh, when I gave the presentation to uh, some of the conference, um, to the research people, they don't quite know what is BI. Actually, BI stands for business intelligence. Uh, Microsoft have, uh, has developed BI solutions for over a decade for enterprises to digest the sheer volume of data that's increasing each day. Power BI 
uh, is a recent offering from Microsoft based on Office 365 that empowers individual users to interactually process and visualizing their data in the data processing tool that they're already familiar with, which is Excel. So um, actually, Power BI is composed by a set of features. Um, there are Power Pivot, uh, which is a highly efficient in-memory engine compressing and indexing data in Excel and allows Excel to handle millions of rows of data. And then it's Power Query, which is a tool help you to find, connect to, and compile data from various resources. And, um, and then it's Power View. Uh, essentially, Power View is an interactive dashboard help you to get the data insights from combined perspectives. And the last one is Power Map, which allows you to put a special um, time series into one view to generate geo-based active diagrams. Okay, um, that's enough talking. Uh, let's uh, put our hands on some real data, see how to uh, make use of these powerful tools. So here on this slide, uh, it's a set of uh, stream flow data from Guadalupe River, uh, well, it's a which is a river uh, resides in the Texas, United States. So I got this data uh, from a professor from University of Washington uh, who is doing the environmental study. So I believe uh, he got this data from some public website, uh, which uh, records the stream flow on different spots alongside the Guad River River in Texas. Um, I s uh, on this slide, you see that these different tables shows the raw data from the devices. And um, I'm not sure whether you see similar data that uh, in your daily work, probably it's even better formatted than the ones that you got. So um, just take a closer look at this data. Um, I want you to take a moment to think. So uh, with the tools of doing data processing that you are using today, probably also Excel, how would you process this data? And the answers to questions like, um, what's, what was happening on the Guadalupe River in terms of stream flow uh, during the period of time says that uh, from June to October in 2013. So um, I'll just give you 10 seconds to think about it. So um, I see, uh, I'm not sure what kind of solutions that you have in your mind already, but I see there are a few challenges here. First, you see that on this, um, on this sheet, you see that the name of the sensor, the latitude, longitude, which is the position information, and the stream flow is put in the same column. So if we want to produce any visuals, we probably want to move the latitude, longitude into, into the column instead, instead of the row, and also, uh, the name of the sensor as well. That's the first thing that we need to do. And the second thing, uh, take a closer to the daytime. You see the daytime here is the raw data from the device. I'm sure that you probably see the similar data, which is some like uh, uh, data that's kind of programmed in this way when the device was installed. However, this kind of data format, which is a pure text, doesn't mean anything to the charting tool like Excel, right? This is not a normal or understandable date time format that can be easily understood by Excel. We need to do some process on that. And the last thing that I can see is that uh, these time intervals, which is like every 15 minutes, uh, it's something that we can have, but um, not necessarily that we need to have this granularity. So we might need to do some aggregation on data. So those are the things that are coming to my mind when I first touch this data. So. Um, I'm not sure uh, how would you visualize that after we pro process the data, how would you visualize that the data should be presented? Maybe it's uh, like a two-dimensional uh, line chart that represents the stream flow of one sensor or average uh, stream flow across different spots on the river uh, uh, on different time as the axis. So that could be one possibility. But another possibility, which is something that I produced 
using our Power BI tool is something like this. So I'm not sure whether you noticed that, but here uh, is a video that is essentially putting a chart um, on, a, on a map. So uh, these different spots represents different geoposition of the sensors alongside the Guadalupe River. And then the height of each column actually means the uh, stream flow of that moment um, when it plays. So I'll play it again. You can take a look again to see what it means. So uh, see that when I play it, the time actually is changing over here, it indicates uh, which day that is uh, the data represent at the moment. So you see the animation and probably uh, you see a spike sometime in the middle, uh, which is actually happening in October. So this actually tells not only that uh, uh, how the stream flow, uh, uh, how to say, looks like um, on the different part of the river uh, is in, in our map uh, very directly, but also it added a time axis. It tells you that uh, uh, in the different time across the year, how the stream flow changes. Uh, the spike that you see uh, in October is actually something happening only on these three spots, but not on the upper streams. So there must be something happening in this area. I'll play that again. Notice when it comes to October, there's a spike. So once we see this kind of animation, we start to develop thinkings further on uh, beyond the data we got, like uh, the, the spike I just mentioned. You will ask yourself a question, why this is happening? Uh, what happened over in this area uh, during that time frame? Actually, I present the same thing to some of the uh, uh, researchers in the conference that I called AGU. So they told me, some of them actually from that area of Texas, they told me that uh, during October, there was a heavy rain last year uh, in October happening just in this part of the, of the state. That's why the stream flow has spiked only in these few spots, but not in the upstream, just the downstream. So tell me whether you feel it's interesting. I feel it's always very, very uh, fascinating to grab the data insights through this kind of visual way. So um, to, to generate something like, uh, like that video, we need to put everything, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, we need to put everything into one table. For example, we need to put the, uh, the name of the sensor in one column, and then the latitude, longitude, and daytime, and stream flow in different columns. Uh, seems it's very easy, right? But from the raw data that we just uh, look at a uh, uh, second ago, it's actually not that easy just to handle that in Excel. Maybe you think you can think a lot of ways to do that, but it's not just easy. You know, it takes time. So how can we do that? Um, so let me show you some live demo of how to use the Power Query tools. Go back the raw data. So basically, in this uh, workbook, it contains several spreadsheets. In each spreadsheet, essentially, is the data that we got from the sensor. And this is uh, our original data that I didn't process at all. So those represent the different sensors alongside the river. So to handle that, well, we are using a tool called Power Query. Uh, to make use of that, I just um, make a table first. You see that even just for this one sensor, this four months data is like uh, more than 12,000 rows. It's a lot of data. And then when I switch to Power Query, 
which is something that you will get when you have Power BI offerings together with your Office 365 subscription, then you will have this Power Query tab. So on Power Query tab, you can see that you can get data from different places. You can get data from the existing workbook and also some other data operations. Now what we want to do is just to put this data into Power Query to do the pre-processing. I'll click this button to uh, import data from I'll make a table first and then go back to Power Query, import this data into Power Query and then you see there's a separate window coming up. So this is a separate window from Excel but uh, looks similar uh, in terms of the layout of the UI. So this part is the canvas, shows the grid data with the data you just imported. And this part is the ribbon, shows all the functions that you can use to uh, operate the data. And on the right hand side, gutter, uh, it shows the, the properties of the data set, as well as the steps that you can, you can see that when you perform the operations, it shows the different steps over here. So what I want to do here uh, is that I want to do several things. Do you remember, I want to put this into columns. I want to do some data processing for this daytime um, column data. And I also want to do some um, aggregation. Uh, first of all, I, I don't need these several uh, rows of data because I want to organize the data into a column manner. Uh, let's say that I want to just remove them for a moment. So it's very easy. I can just choose to remove top rows and uh, remove the first six rows because this is six rows over here and then just through two clicks I have this pure data of the data and the corresponding uh, stream flow data that I got here so I just double click to change the title to be daytime and stream flow that's the first step and you see there's a step over here shows that what I did. And I can navigate through the steps to repro what I was doing. See, this is the original data, and do the first remove first columns, and then rename the column title. So next, what I want to do is to, there's a button here, which is uh, data. And then what I want to do is to um, process this daytime column. So as I mentioned before, you see this daytime, it represents the date, and then with the T, and then time. And then some numbers at the tail probably represents how much time it takes to record the data. So how can we handle that? First, um, I think I need to extract date from this text. So what I want to do is to select this column and uh, split the column by some delimiter. So um, Power Query allows you to split column by different characters like column, comma, equal sign. And in this case, I want to split common column, use the character T because you see T is essentially the separator between the date and time. So I'll type T here, split from the left and then automatically it generates two columns for me. One is the column represents the date, and the other is the column represents the time. But the time itself doesn't really uh, right, looks right, because if you like go back to the previous lab, so it says that um, Power Query intelligently uh, changed the column type for me after I split the column. However, the change of the second column incorrect because this represents the like 12 a.m. instead of 10 instead of 10 p.m. so I think it's because of this messy uh, uh, string format here what I need to do is to revert back and don't let it change the time for me automatically and if I want to further process to extract the time what I, what I, what I can do here tell me from what I did just now yeah, probably you already see that I can split the column again by using the uh, character of dot, right? You see the dot here, which separates the time and the, the, the time expansion on collecting the data. 
So I can use this dot. But here I just want to show you show you another power or another way of doing it, which is using the number of characters. Because you see the time always used the eight characters here. I can say that I use the eight number of characters to separate the column from left. Let's let this column here. Separate it by eight. And you see this time it is right because now it can correctly understand this is 12 a.m. and this is the time. So this is something I may not need to do the representation because it's all the same, right? So I can just delete it. And here you see the data and time. So uh, I mentioned earlier that we want to do some aggregation. Uh, for example, when I represent this four months data, which is like more than 12,000 rows of data, uh, I may not need that granularity. So I just need a data average by day. So what I can do here is that I can um, say that group the data by by daytime point one, which is the first column, and I want to make a new column called flow average and do the operation of average out the stream flow column. So once I click OK, you will see that there's only two columns left. One is the original daytime column, which is sorted by date, and the other is the stream flow column, which is a new column that aggregates the data by date. See that? It's very convenient, right? Before, when I want to do that, I may need to write some like uh, algorithms in the using VBA or use complicated formulas in Excel to do that. But now you see that to achieve this is very easy. I just need a couple of clicks, uh, and then the purpose is achieved. So let me revert, revert back. Say that um, I also present this to some of the uh, graduate students. Uh, they ask me a question and says that, hey, uh, sometimes I don't want to see the data by date because I also want to see like in in one day, what's the average stream flow across different hours? So what I can do here is to, instead of group by day, I can also group by group by time, right? Instead of group by the first column, I can group by the second column, it says that I can group by the time that I collected the data, and also aggregate the second column, and then you achieve the same goal. So I'll just save that step here. I'll just save that step here because, you know, essentially we're going to use this data. So the next thing that I want to do um, is to add back two columns uh, that I mentioned earlier that we want to add the latitude data and the longitude data. How can I do that? I can just simply insert a column and put the value as, um, let's say, name the name this set of data as quad loop at comfort. Click OK. Because I I, uh, I insert a string here, I need to add the string indicator. And then it's done. You see that all the rows of this new column was specified with the value we just I just put. So I can change the column title to name. And now if I want to just reorder it, I can reorder it. And uh, do you remember, I still have the original latitude and longitude data over here. I can say that I only insert another column and put the latitude data, which is 29.7. OK, and then it's added. Add latitude the same way I add uh, minors. Longitude. Yeah. So the data looks much better now. What you can do is to click apply and close, and this data will be saving back to Excel. 
your new work worksheet. And you remember that uh, we uh, used to have more than 12,000 rows. Now we only have uh, like only have 139 rows. It's because we've already aggregated data by date. So uh, when you select the data that you just put in here, you see the uh, right hand side task plan coming up says that this is the table that you just produced. If you want to do further editing, say that I want to do more aggregation, or I want to do data processing, like combine the data and time, you can always go back and see the data over here, as well as the steps. And they can freely click back to replay the steps that you just did. OK, that's, that's uh, the steps that I showed uh, using Power Query to format one a row of data. And I can do the same to the rest of the columns. So what I'm going to sh show you next is that uh, with this data, what you need to do is to combine the tables that you made from one sheet after another, right? So for example, these are the first table that we just made, and then this is the second one. And essentially, what we need is to put all the data in one table so that we can use this one table to produce some of the graphics that we think could make sense. So what I need to do here, you see, when I select the data here, on the right-hand side task pane, the Power Query um, selection will be shown here, and then you can just continue to edit that. Double-click, I want to continue to add it, and to append one table after another, I can just simply click this append button and select append the first table I made to the current table, which is the second table. Click OK. And it's done. And we don't see the data change here because every time it only shows 100 rows. But if we click apply and close, go back to the original spreadsheet, and you will see that. Uh, You will see that we have the like two different census data in one table, right? And we can just do the same to the rest of the uh, census data, and uh, just in like uh, 20 minutes, you get your data done. So after we got the data, how can we produce that uh, fancy visual and video? So here's the data. So I just shortened the steps due to the time constraint. But you can see this is the final data after I combine these seven different sensors data into one table. So um, another tool that I'm going to use is called Power Map, which is also part of the offerings with uh, Microsoft Power BI. So uh, after you have that offering installed with your Office 365, then in the Excel, in the Insert tab, you will see a Map button over here. So with the data that you have in your spreadsheet, you just need to simply click the this map button, and then it will bring up Power Map. And this is the tool. It's called the tool, which is the visual, uh, the interactive visual that I just uh, uh, showed to you through the video. So um, that's the existing one, but I just want to show you how to, how easy it is to create a new one. I just click this new tool. So once I click on that. Power Query instantly understand the data that I have in my Excel spreadsheet. You see, this is the separate window from Excel. And uh, also similar layout, the, the operations and the properties that you can see down the right-hand side, left-hand side, see the different tools. And here in the middle, you see a map. So this map is actually uh, powered and backed by the Beam Maps, uh, Beam Maps engine. And, uh, uh, Power Map, once it digests the data from my spreadsheet, it smartly tells that, oh, there's latitude or longitude that you can use to represent the position on the map. I can use either one because this other thing in terms of uh, telling the uh, rough visual position on the map. So what I need to do next is to uh, specify what I want to put uh, on, the, on this uh, map. Uh, for, for the first thing I want to add of course, is the uh, stream flow, the average stream flow data. I just click check the button. You see, uh, because Power Map understand this is kind of a measurement data, it will put it into the height of the column chart. I can I can change from these four different charts: the bubble chart, heat map chart, 
but not region chat because we don't have a region in this data source. So I just change it back to the column chart, and you see the stream flow has been aggregated. Uh, what I want to do is that because I've already done aggregation in Power Query, so I will just skip that step, so it's no aggregation. And then the second thing I want to do, you remember that we already have a time specified in our table. I just want to check this time. In Power Query, uh, Power Map Smart Detect, this is the date time format that they can understand. It can understand uh, in the Power Map and add another axis on the bottom, which is a time axis. Uh, also here, you can see the date time has been uh, specified here. The last thing I want to do is to uh, put the, the sensor name on top, and then it represents in different color on the map. You can see the different color represents a different place and different sensors. And here we go. We have a, we have an active animated map that we just saw before. Very easy, right? Less than three minutes, you get this fancy visual. And if you don't like this kind of uh, map, you can also change from different themes of maps. For example, the one that I use. I think it's this one. So this is the one that we use. And you can navigate it through. Zoom in, zoom out while you play the time series. And another fancy thing that you can do is to not only capture a screenshot, but also you can create a video from this uh, place or two by just click this button. You can play different quality of videos. Um, just the same time, I'm not going to reproduce this video, but it's very easy. Just choose the quality of the video that you want and click create and Power Map will start to create the video for you. And then with the video, which is in that pack for format, uh, you can then share that to many places, like at YouTube or any other place that you want to share, or through email. Okay, so this is Power Map. So um, the next thing I want to talk about, also back to Power Query, is that you see that when I get the data from Power Query, actually I just uh, make a table in the Excel spreadsheet and the retrieve the data from that table into Power Query to do the data processing. However, Power Query's ability is much more than that. It not only can retrieve the data from web, from like Excel, different files, and from different type of data sources or databases, or even from like Facebook fees, all data fees, or like Azure Marketplace, just to show the power of the cloud connection or just to show you that uh, we can make use of the Windows Azure blob storage. Uh, for example, I already have a blob storage called Azure Data. Click OK. And then Power Query will bring up the category and uh, the container from my Azure storage blob. And from the different blob, you can load the data into Power Query directly. You see, this is a binary that is loaded from the Azure blob. And this is essentially the same data I just processed. And you can start over from there to process the data in Power Query. So just to show, this is the table, right? It's the same one. OK. So um, that is our first demo today. So uh, we'll give a few minutes for you to ask questions. Jeff, so far I don't have any questions for you to answer. So if you'd like to go ahead and continue, go ahead. OK. So, um, OK, so we'll just go ahead. Uh, on to the second demo. So the next one I'm going to show you um, is Jeff, I actually, I actually do have one question for okay. you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, send that to you now. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay, um, the question that I got is that uh, uh, I was wondering whether this is an additional charge for Power BI offerings or this is part of Office 365 or Azure. So um, this is a new product that's just newly released by Microsoft. And the current offering is something uh, based upon Office 365, but it's a separate offering. So after you got a Office 365 subscription, you need to pay uh, some amount of actual money uh, to get these offerings. That's the offering for now, but I think for the EDU users, for the education uh, sector users, what I know is that probably there will be a separate plan, but uh, just stay tuned, and uh, um, I believe there will, new, there will be some plan uh, coming out. Okay, so shall we go back to our demo? Yep, and you have a few compliments too. It's a great demo so far. So uh, the next thing I'm going to show you is the Power View. So Power View, as I mentioned earlier, is an interactive dashboard. Um, I remember that I mentioned that a lot of times. Uh, better data insights come from combining the different perspectives of data. So Power View, although it's served as like the getting quick business insight, and making business decisions, but to me, from what I see, it's also helpful for the researchers to doing the research by seeing the data from different perspectives. So here's an example. Uh, this is another kind of like environmental study data, which is the marine data that's gathered around Puget Sound, which is the area around Seattle, uh, Seattle area, big Seattle area. So on the left hand side, uh, it's a map, also based on BIM map, uh, shows the different marine data. And you can navigate the map, actually this is active, and you can navigate, zoom in, zoom out. and see the different positions of the marines or sensors alongside the, the Puget Sound uh, area and see where the data is actually gathered. On the right hand side, uh, this is the data actually for, from um, also similar with the demo that we showed just now. It's the raw data of the discharge data or the stream flow data that we gathered from the, um, the, the marines. So I got this data from a website uh, from uh, environmental um, government that uh, shows the like different tides, diff, uh, changes or the waves changes of, of, along different rivers around Puget Sound area. The cool thing of that is that you see the two or three different perspectives on one map. For example, the geo, uh, geo uh, positions of the different marines and uh, you see the discharge data of the, on each sensor as well as the stream flow data. And another cool part uh, is that the data between the charts on this dashboard is actually um, associated. Uh, what I mean by that is that, for example, if I click on this big uh, spot over here, it means that you are selecting this marine. On the right hand side, it only shows this marine, uh, which is marine the Skagit. And uh, at this, as I said, that you can see a kind of geo down, geo in view of the data in uh, for this marine sensor. So if I want to only see, for example, this discharge data is too prominent. Uh, I want to see the details of this stream flow data. What I want to do is very simple. It's just to like unselect the discharge data for a moment. And then I can see the stream flow data. So actually that by comparing the shape of the line chart of these two different measurements, you can see that they are essentially the same. It's just that the measurement um, is different, right? And I can also unselect this specific uh, marine from the map, and then you can see the overall view. Okay, so it's kind of very fancy. Um, and some other fancy thing that you can do here is to, like, uh, for example, I can change if I don't like the background of the. Map, I can change to the road map, and if I want to see the name of the marine directly on the map, I can also do that. Or here, uh, if I don't like the line chart, I can also change the chart type to be 
column chart just by couple of clicks. It's very convenient. So um, some of the power that we can do here is that, um, for example, that um, go back to let me change that. Bit. So, for example, that uh, I only want to see these three um, marine data in green, uh, this quality and pure up. So, what I want to do is select this chart and filter the chart by only choose these three marines, and I'm gonna compile this the this chart data of these three different marines. Or if I only want to, as I mentioned earlier, I only want to see, see the stream flow data, I can also see that here. So just by purely seeing this shape of the line, you probably can ask yourself a question. It looks like the stream flow of these three different uh, marines looks similar in terms of the pattern, right? They must share the similar pattern, especially between these two green and this quality. And then in terms of pure lab, you know, the pattern is similar, it's just have a larger volume, there must be something happen behind that. So why is that? When I ask myself that question, I, I go back to the map, come back to this view. As I said, that I just want to take a closer look at the data of these two, three different marines. I figure that they share a similar pattern. And uh, I just ask myself a question, why they have a similar pattern? I go to the map. I check the position of these three different marines. Uh, the green is here, pure lab is here, and this quality is here. So I see there's a big snow mountain over here, which is the mountain right here. I live in this area, I know that. So probably the reason that they share the similar pattern is not only in the geo, uh, geo position of this stream marine or the river, it's all like the data source or the water source is mostly from the mountain. Uh, also, but also is that, you know, when I asked some of the researchers who study this marine data in the Puget Sound area, they told me that actually the water comes from the snow mountain and to th these two rivers go, go, go through green and then Nisqually and they will just go back, concentrate in this point at Puyola. That's why, you know, the water comes from these two rivers and uh, uh, emerged uh, into Puget Sound through Pure Lab. That's why we see this pattern. So isn't that interesting? I feel it's very interesting just by these through clicks. So uh, you may wonder in this fancy chart uh, dashboard, how can I create that? It's actually very easy. I'm going to show you that. So um, also with the power, with the Power BI offering uh, together with Office 365, and once you have that you will see a button here in the insert tab in Excel says Power View. Here I'm just going to click on Power View and uh, create a new one and uh, specify your name first. So we'll handle the question later. Just uh, put the name first and then what I want to do is um, I want to add the marine uh, data onto a map. So you see the data over here, uh, ignore this table one for a moment. This is just experimentation data that I put early. But essentially, the data from the previous power view coming from these two tables. One is the facts table, um, which is this table, which is the similar data that we got from the previous table. Uh, Average the data, aggregate the data by date, put the name, and uh, the second table that uh, uh, we need to use is the metadata of each marine, which represents the uh, latitude and longitude, and probably the name, uh, which represents in this simple table. Okay, so go back to the power view we are going to create. First, I want to create that map. So what I need to do is to use the marine metadata, put everything onto the map, and you see here it's a raw table being put on the dashboard. So next, I want to make it a map. I just click on the map button, and it changes to a map. On the right-hand side, you see 
we need to specify the longitude and the latitude. So it's so easy. I can just do that by drag and drop. And then you see there are multiple maps showing here, but we will not need that multiple maps. So what we need to do um, is simply change the location name to marine name. And then I don't need these vertical multiples. So here you see the map. And uh, through the layout button, I can adjust the data legend. Maybe I don't need the title for this one. And here we go. We got a map that we saw earlier, the original demo. Okay, that's the map. And next, what I got, want to get is a set of the charts, the line charts. So um, before I do that, you see that probably all of those dots doesn't really mean anything, right? Because the the dots here, uh, the color of the dots represents a different type of marines. But the size of the dot, we still need to have some specification for it. So you see the data that I'm using here are the data that I uh, that from one uh, same table, but I actually I can use the data from two different tables and show that into one chart. What I want to do is that uh, here you see the size is using the latitude data, which is wrong. I just remove this field for a moment, and then I can select, for example, just use the discharge data for the size of the circle. So you see that's represented on the map. You may have a question, how can I connect these two tables together, you know, just from the Excel? These are just two simple tables, the facts table and the metadata. How can I connect them two together? Actually, in Power View, you can do that directly by clicking this relationship button. Obviously, I've created two different relationships here. But what, what I want to do is actually create a new relationship between the two tables. It says that in the facts table, here I'm just using the name and make sure the name is identical between the two, net, two tables and then choose the meta table and then use the name and then I can create. But PowerView is smart enough to tell that this relationship has created beforehand so I don't need to recreate that again. But if you are starting from scratch, you have to recreate this table by yourself. Okay, let's quickly proceed to the second one. Um, now what I need to do is to use the data in the facts table. Again, I put everything on the dashboard. And then I'll change um, the type of the chart to be a line chart. Then I will use the value, value discharge and quantity state is right. And axis, actually I don't need to use name as axis, I just need to use uh, date, probably it's right. And the uh, legend is value, uh, is right. And the uh, vertical multiples, which is the vertical like different uh, tile of the chart, uh, I don't want to use date, um, I want to use the name. Then here we go. So see how easy it is to create this power view. Altogether, it only takes like three minutes, five minutes, and then you can get the visuals you want and start to draw in the draw the data to get the data insights that really want help for your uh, research. So um, that's uh, that's all the demo for today. Um, so uh, leave two minutes for Q and A, and then I'll hand over to Kenji. Okay, uh, I got a question of uh, is there a way to save a uh, Power Query and apply it to a different data set uh, with the same structure and the format? So um, I think the question here is that whether I can like repros uh, using the same steps. Actually, you can. Um, show that.
So uh, we may not have enough time to do that, but essentially the Power Query data is a set of scripts that you can program by yourself. So with the OM interface that you do, so you can just reproduce all the steps and do the batch edit uh, against the different data sources. Another, another cool thing that I um, missed to mention is that uh, in Power Query, not only that you can um, not only that you can process the data, but also you can share the data to other people. For example, for this data I just produced, because I log into uh, Power Query with my corporate Microsoft credentials, so I can just share this data directly to my co coworkers in this enterprise or to any people that I want to uh, specify here. Once I share that, then other people can discover that by search the data from this place. For example, I can just quickly search data from this online search. It says that I want to search data of the population by country. Actually, this is the data I believe has been uh, mined and also formatted by some of my colleagues. Like you can explore the data and preview the data in this way. And I can also land the data into my current worksheet by just these few clicks. So yeah, that's the way that you can share and uh, reuse the data. Power Query. Okay, I uh, we don't see other question coming in yet. So, okay, I think that's um, all the demos for today. Uh, to quickly sum up. Uh, we went through the usage of Power Query, Power Map, and Power View by working through a couple of research scenarios using the real environmental study data. Hope through these demos, uh, you get a snippet of the power of Excel Power BI. All the tools that we demo today uh, was built under the philosophy of uh, self-service style business intelligence and data processing, so which we believe that only by empower individual users, which is you, um, uh, inside the data analysis tools that you already know, which is Excel, that you can do more and know more and uh, become more powerful by yourself. So um, that's all I have for today. Um, here I'm going to pass it to you, Kenji. Of Excel, and I think. Um you know, a lot of people maybe have not seen, uh, you know, the full power of, of Excel and what it can do. Um, and so, uh, you know, it was great to see how you can quickly just pull in data, um, you know, when we talk about data science and data wrangling, um, and, and that term, you know, implies a lot of pain. Um, and I think, um, you know, you've managed to show how Excel um, can make that really, really easy, um, and particularly around, um, you know, mapping of the data. Um, so um, I'd really like to thank Jeff, uh, Jeff for that um, great presentation. Um, if you want to find out more, uh, the best thing is just to do a, do a web search on Power BI, uh, and that comes right up, and you'll see um, a lot more in terms of not just how do you get hold of Power BI, um, but also um, some other demos of it. One of the ones I love on there uh, is actually some open government data. Um, being pulled from the UK Open Government Portal, pulled into Power BI, and then visualized, um, and then also, again, mapped um, to show actually some sort of traffic incident data. Um, and it really shows how we can use um, the sort of new features in Excel to really unlock some of that, some of that data. Um, so this webinar is part of a series in our Azure for Research program. Um, and the reason we included the Excel Power BI was you know, as Jeff showed, how you can hook to data in Azure, and that could be created from something like Hadoop, um, could be from the marketplace, could be from something like um, Storm or Kafka for streaming real-time GPS data and being able to, to, to show that. Um, so our Azure for Research program, um, you know, has many facets, including our awards, um, training, uh, which is taking place around the world, uh, and also um, coming online. Uh, these webinars, some technical papers, um, and also research community engagement. So we're at, at events and running our own, own events. Really, the best way to keep in touch is on LinkedIn. Um, we have a Windows Agile for Research group, uh, and of course, on Twitter as well, um, and the website agileforresearch.com 
um, you can go to. Um, so with that, I'd just really like to thank everybody uh, for joining, particularly thanking Jeff um, you know, for a great run through on all the, the new features on Excel uh, and Power BI. So um, thank you very much and I hope to see all of you online or uh, live at uh, one of our events or one of the community events. So uh, thank you everyone for joining us today. All right, thank you, Kenji. We hope that you have found today's information helpful. If you enjoyed today's webcast or have feedback on how we can provide you with a better event, please let us know by completing our survey. You should see the link to the survey in a pop-up box on your screen. As a reminder, all materials from today's presentation will be available approximately 48 hours. I'd like to extend a big thank you to our presenters, Kenji and Jeff. This concludes today's webcast. You may now disconnect from this call.